Hello, it's Sean, and this is part 23 and the finale of the Thousand Scale NCC Excelsior build. Now I've got it upside down right now because I'm working on fixing some decal mistakes. And I'm going to bring you closer to the table and show you what I'm up to. Be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. I'm back. And uh, you can see what I'm working on here. So as you can see, I uh, used my mixture of the Excelsior Gray to fix the dark that was there. It's from glue spillover. And of course, I'm also going to have to uh, use the Excelsior Gray there to hide the trace of the old decal so I can put on the new one. And I'm just going to tilt the entire ship on its um, the two napkins when it's time to uh, do the other side. So I'll do this side and show you what it looks like, and then I'll just turn it around for this side. Be right back. Okay, as you can see, I put it on the uh, other side. Now I'm going to have to tilt everything around so I can get at the other side because the the nacelles came loose while I was. Um, you know, putting the ship on its back, the nacelles came loose from the mount. So if you remember what I did, I, uh, I had packed the neck with cardboard to increase the gluing surface. And, of course, I haven't posted the video yet, but I'll tell you now, I've uh, worked on the 1400 scale Enterprise B from StarCraft, and I discovered that the Gorilla Glue works perfectly at... Um, Making a strong bond so nothing falls off. So if Gorilla Glue works for resin kit, it'll certainly work for this to the cardboard in the slot once uh, I get around to having to do the nacelles, because that'll be the final piece that I have to do. So I'm going to turn the ship around. And actually, i got to touch that up a bit, don't I? One second. Before I... Uh, Before I turn the ship, I've got to uh, put in more um, of the uh, Excelsior mix. So I'll get it off the lid of the paint bottle here. Just touch that up a little. Good, okay, there we go. So I'm going to turn the ship around carefully, and I'll be right back once I've done that. Or, you know, why don't I move you up to the, uh, up, so that you're not in the way. And you'll see uh, if I'm successful or not, so stand by here. I'm just going to put these up on the ledge. There we go. All right, here we go. Got to move it at the same time. Here we go. Here we are. Here we are. <clears throat> That's how you move the ship without scraping it, without damaging it, and without anything uh, falling off. Okay, good. Here we go. So now, as you can see, I can access the other side, and I'm going to do the painting on that, and I'll be back. Okay, so I put the light gray there. Don't worry, it'll darken to the same shade as the ship. I reinforced one of these thrusters, and you can see how I'm going to have to use the, um, the pen uh, to reinforce the, um, you know, to simulate the missing bottom thrusters. I can use the uh, the Stadler marker. It has a very fine red point. I used it successfully on my 537 Enterprise A. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the ship. It's worked out pretty well. And when I'm done uh, putting... Because after I'm done with this, once this paint dries, I'm going to put on the... Oh, semi-gloss clear. Better go... Okay, I'm back. Uh, I've got the regular uh, Tamiya Clear here. If you can focus in on it. Well, you can see it there. 
focus on my finger. Well, the camera doesn't want to focus, but there's the regular clear. I will put it on top of the uh, paint once it's dry on both sides. And then I can put the new uh, engine decals from Federation Models right under there. And the last of the decal repair... Oh, and don't forget, of course, there. You know, I have the second set of Aztecs, so I'll do that section also right there. And then the uh, use the Krylon pen for, you know, simulating the thruster or two. And then the uh, ship will be done, and I'll just have to re-glue in the cells with the Gorilla Glue. And uh, the ship will be done and ready for Fan Expo in um, a few days. Well, it's actually, it's actually uh, 11 days. So that's all for now. That's the end of part A. Well, section A of part 23 of the Excelsior build. And so I will uh, be back when I have replaced the missing decals and done all the work on the bottom of the ship that needs repairing and I'll come back when I've uh, done that so talk to you all later and have a good rest of your work week hello there everyone this is Sean and this is part 23 B of the NCC Excelsior build so as you can see from the model I have done the paint rest restoration I've put on the placeholder decals, as you can see here, and there on the impulse housing. I turned it so it goes the same length, so it looks different than the other ones. And you can see what I did uh, right here. That is the second Aztec set, and I, uh, I took just the part of the decal I needed to fix the uh, problem and I used that and I'll show you which part of the Federation models decals I used. Be right back. Okay as you can see here this is the first set of Federation models decals unlike the uh, side saucer stripes I didn't have to use three sets to get the impulse housings right and you see how they go lengthwise up the uh, impulse housing there, not sideways. So I made sure to do mine lengthwise, but when I realized, unlike the picture, they don't actually fill the whole section, so I did my best to center it. Besides, it's underneath. You'll hardly see it with the nacelles in the way. Anyway, this is a very short section of part 23. I'm going to give the uh, ship a couple days for its decals to dry. And on the weekend, I am going to try and simulate the missing two thrusters here with my Stadler marker. You see how there's a red outline? Well, I will simply copy that uh, over here. You can see where a thruster once was. And if you follow that line directly across from there, go all the way along the hatch, you go to the other side, and there's the other thruster. So that's good. Then you go to this side and you see where this thruster is. That thruster is technically only one hull section away from the neck. So that means that the juncture between the old and new Aztec decals is where I'm going to put the extra thruster by hand. So, And once I've done that section of the bottom, say maybe on... Well, I don't know, Saturday, because I'm doing it with the markers. I will flip the ship over carefully onto its stand again. And I will use my cardboard method to reinforce the nacelle mounts. And glue in the housing properly. Because now we're only... Well, we're only one week away from when I make my trip to Fan Expo, as you can see on the calendar here, see? Fan Expo, where I can get George Takai's signature on my model. And because I'm staying there on Friday the 22nd, I'm leaving on 
Sunday the 24th, I can spend the entire day from opening to closing at the Fan Expo on the 23rd and do all the shopping I want. So anyway, that's all uh, for now for this uh, section of part 23 of the Enterprise Excelsior, the NCC Excelsior build. And I'll be back when I have um, done the bottom thrusters. So I'll talk to you all then, and only one work day left in the week. Hope you enjoy your weekend. See you all later. All right, hello everyone. I'm back again. This is Sean. This is part uh, 23C of the Excelsior build, and the final part before I go to Fan Expo in five days. Now, the thrusters, the nacelle pylons, are more stable than I thought, so I don't have to re-glue them after all. I did successfully do the bottom thrusters. I tried the bottom phaser decals. Number one, they wouldn't stick. Number two, even with the finest brush, the yellow paint just went all over the place, so I airbrushed it off. I mean, I brushed it off with a uh, Q-tip. So I'm going to carefully f put the ship upside down. And I'll... Well, no, wait, I may, might be able to get it from underneath. Stand by. Okay, so if you look under it carefully, you might be able to see the approximated decal that I did there. Now that is where also the new decal is to replace the one that was uh, wrecked a bit by the glue. It's hard, it's hard to focus because there's objects in the background. If I can focus exactly on the ship, it'll be better. Anyway, I only did about, only had to do two decals anyway. But the bottom of the ship is done. The ship is actually complete. The nacelle pylons, just a minute here, I'm going to test something. No, you see? Cell pylons are even. So that's good. So I would say that now the entire Excelsior is finished. I am going to clear off the uh, napkins here of all the model building materials and try to get uh, some good booty shots. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, thanks for waiting. I'm back again. So now we can get some uh, nice beauty shots of the Excelsior without all the modeling supplies in the way. So there's the port side. Oh, internet rudder's in the way. One second. There we go. There's a good shot of the, uh, of the, um, you know, the forward side. And the starboard side. And of course, the back side. Well, if I look carefully, yeah, that's pretty good. There we go. And of course, you can get on top. And on top forward. There you go. On top from the port side. And on top from the back side. There we go. And now I'm going to put on the shuttle bay so you can get the full effect. All right, there's the ship with the uh, shuttle bay attached. Well, not attached, just placed on top of the ship. But I'm going to leave it as a detachable component because the glue didn't hold. So it seems to make sense to do it that way. And now, uh, what I'm going to do now for the next uh, and last minute of this section of part 22 is I'm going to try the posable stand, so I'll be right back with that. Well, as you can see, the posable stand seems to want to make the Excelsior launch into orbit. That's uh, quite an angle, but uh, not one I would have preferred. I'm, that's why I'm going to use the stationary section of the stand. But, okay. But this is the first uh, model that has actually been able to take the posable stand, but 
Okay, there it is. Good. All right, let's see if I can uh, rotate it the other way. Uh, one minute. Bring this back a bit. Tilt it just a little. Okay, well, that's 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 quite an angle. That's like peeling out a planetary order. Okay, let's let's try this way. Let's see if it'll tilt forward just as much. Hmm? Okay, there we go. Ah, that's a nice shot. The, the model tipping forward, of course, with the light. There you go. Okay, that's, 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 that's good. It'll make it easier for uh, George Takai to sign if the actual ship isn't in the way of the stamp. That's, that's good. Uh, let's uh, turn it this way. Bring it to the port side. Uh, there you go. That's quite good, but I, I prefer the stable stand. I don't want the ship to accidentally tip off. So let's see. Let's see if the shuttle bay holds with the ship at an angle like this. You see, the ship has to be completely stable for the shuttle bay to hold. But anyway, I mean, it's, a, it's nice that the ship works on a posable stand, but... That's not something I'm going to use very often, just because. But I am glad that the uh, the nacelles are holding. I mean, the, the nacelle thing doesn't seem to need reinforcement after all. Of course, when I pack this ship up in it's gonna be three days now, because I hope to travel on Friday, I am going to uh, bring along the... Uh, Super glue, just in case I need to reinforce the nacelles. But anyway, I, I honestly think for stability reasons that the ships look a lot better when they are on a stable stand like that. I'm going to turn on the other light here. <clears throat> there you go. Now you can get better view, better angle. But that is my... Uh, finished Excelsior and I'm going to take another video for part 23 when I am uh, you know at the hotel in four days for Fan Expo and of course I'll take videos for Fan Expo also and that will be the final part of part 23 Unless this is part 22. Let me just check one second. All right, I was, uh, I'm correct. This is part 23, section C. Part 23, section D, D for Day of Fan Expo, D for Autographed, with a D at the end. That will be the final section of the video, the grand finale of the Excelsior build. And I mean, this is the first time I ever built a uh, Excelsior class ship. All by myself is the most complex AMT model I built all by myself, with perhaps the exception of the Enterprise A. But I'm going to take lessons I learned from this so I can uh, connect the two sections of that ship together, the neck and the forward hull. Well, the neck and the star drive. But anyway, there's uh, the finished ship. It's all ready. And I will put this video together with the rest of part 23. So that I'm all ready for Fan Expo. On Saturday. So anyway, I uh, that's all for now. And I'll talk to you all later in about five days. Hope you have a good week. And if you're going to Fan Expo, hope to see you there. Bye bye.